mind up. I'm sorry, brother, your time's up. I see the top and I climb up. Coming up tonight on Football Tonight, the Lafayette Fighting Irish trying to claim a share of the Midland Empire Conference title, but St. Pius standing in the way. Down in Plattsburgh, maybe you can, and trying to clinch a share of the KCI Conference title tonight. And a battle of top-ranked teams in eight-man football up in Fairfax. Stanberry visiting East Atchison. Who stands tall at the end of this one? All this and much more coming up on Football Tonight. I gotta go for the goal. I need to switch up the mode. We Welcome into week number eight of football tonight. I'm Chris Roush. That's Mitchell Ribberall. Week number eight, meaning we just have one more week of the regular season in Missouri of high school football, and then it's playoff time. It's gone by so fast already, week eight. Tremendous season so far. Yes. A lot of good games throughout the year. We have some top ten matchups across the board. 11-man, 8-man tonight. A lot to get to. Take us away. Yeah, and tonight we'll start right here in St. Joseph, up on the north side, the Lafayette Irish hosting St. Pius. We pick up in the second quarter, Irish down 27-0. Irish on defense, Pius throwing, Jared Crabb disrupts that pass enough for the incompletion, and then later in the drive, Moss scrambling out, he throws end zone, and Crabb is there for the interception for the Irish. But Irish unable to score, St. Pius now, Moss rolls left, finds Shane Dorian in for the first down and then later in he rolls left and finds into the back of the end zone Shane Dorian for the touchdown and St. Pius too much for the Irish tonight as they win 40 to 7. The Benton Cardinals back on the road to visit the Cameron Dragons. Both teams fighting to snap their own losing streaks. This one a good one. First quarter both teams able to force turnovers burn through most of the quarter but Cameron strikes first quarterback Alec Lisenby to senior Dominic Hurst who runs it in for a seven yard score with a minute to go. The Cardinals, though, answer. Second quarter, Carson Newland under pressure. Scrambles all the way to the sideline. Looks down the field. Someone's down there, right? Denver Dolman, who breaks one tackle. And then another one gets to the end zone to tie the ball game up. Second quarter, after the Cardinals force another turnover, Lisenby rolls right, looks back. Newland rolls back. Back across the middle, toss a 27-yard touchdown pass to Devin Hoffman. The Dragons to come back to win this one today, night 20 to 14. And Chillicothe, they get the shutout victory tonight against East Kansas City. They win this one 62 to 0. Up in Maryville, we go. The Savannah Savages take on the Maryville Spoofhounds as they defend their home field. After receiving the kick, the Spoofhounds quick to move the ball down the field. Two pounds running back Andrew McGee consistently moving the ball forward. Play after play, Maryville continues to push the ball down the field. They help a quarterback, Connor Drake. The Spoof Hounds find themselves close to the end zone. Two pounds decide to change it up a little bit. Give the ball to senior Tyler Seamer. He crosses the goal line, but the touchdown brought back by a penalty after a first down conversion. Maryville put up six on the board, pick up the extra point. Savage is set to receive the kick. Maryville tries an onside kick and they attempt to catch Savannah off guard. Savannah though ends up recovering the kick. In Savannah's first drive, Maryville's defense able to break through the line, stop the run game. Savannah's first drive goes for three and out. Block punt would later set Maryville to score their second touchdown. Spoof Hounds roll 42-0, stretching their winning streak against Savannah to 11 games. Now the 1-6 Central visiting 2-4 Staley tonight. Central looking for their second win on the season, 
early first quarter, the handoff goes to freshman Gabe Fields, who picks up the first down. He picks up 23 yards, breaking some tackles, and finally gets dragged down by three defenders. Next drive, QB Stone, Wetlofer drops back, feels the pressure. He's scrambling, scrambling around, can't find what he's doing. He runs about 40 yards, avoiding defenders, but only gains about 12 on the play. And then Staley on the move. Number nine, Andrew Stewart knocks the ball loose, and Drake Stagner jumps on it for the turnover. And then just before the half, Staley dropping back, trying a deep ball. But number 11, Will Padgett, he goes up and comes down with the interception. But Staley took a 28-0 lead in the half, and Central falls 54-6 in this one. Central finishes their regular season next week at home against Park Hill South. And don't go anywhere because there's a lot of football left to come on football tonight. Can the Stanbury Bulldogs bounce back from last week's loss this week when they take on East Atchison? And can the Mid Buchanan Dragons keep up their hot streak and stay perfect on the season? Find out next on Football Tonight. Welcome back to football tonight right here on KQ2. We appreciate you staying up with us. And we keep things rolling with the second ranked team in Class 1 out to Plattsburgh. We go 7-0 Mid Buchanan going for a share of the KCI title, taking on the Tigers. First quarter, 7-0 Dragons. Blake Hunter on the quarterback keeper following his blockers, and the senior is gone. Touchdown Mid Buchanan. PAT good. Dragons go up 14-0. A little later in this one, after forcing a turnover on downs, Tigers trying to get something going into a really good Dragon defense, but maybe Cannon swallows them up, unable to get much going throughout this ball game. Move ahead, Dragons assistants getting in a lot of work tonight. Maybe you can take care of business in this one. Dragons winning at 56-7, improved to 8-0, and a win at least a share of the KCI Conference title. The Dragons will travel to state-ranked West Platte next week. West Platte and Hamilton, two top 10 teams. Tie game at 14, running back Cameron Williams gets the ball, runs it to the near side and down the sideline, scoring all the way from the 22. Two point conversion, no good. Blue Jays up 19-14, under five left in first. Quarterback for Hamilton was absolutely dominant tonight. He takes it far side, tips toe, tiptoes down the sideline and he watches all his defenders chase behind him as he scores the touchdown. 
Hornets up three. Next drive, watch Tucker Ross work his magic. He throws it deep down the middle of the field and Jared Potts comes down with it. And then Bryson Spear finishes off the drive, putting Hamilton up 10 in this one. And then there's 39 seconds left in the first half. Blue Jays pull out all the stops in this one. Mason Montez this time drops back, throws a dime to Trent Taylor and they move the chains. And then again, Montez dropping back to pass. Rolls right, throws it up, finds Taylor again to put them within inches of the goal line. And the Blue Jays cap off a quick drive with a touchdown from Emmett Sullivan to end the first half. And then West Platte defeats Hamilton 38-29, and they will have a chance for a share in the KCI conference title next week. Over in Gower, number five, East Buchanan hosting Lawson and KCI play. Start this one second quarter, 14-0 East Buchanan. Lawson blocks a punt, turns it into three points, 14-3 now. But then it's the Bulldogs answering fast and furious. Crew Conaway out of the gun, running the option, pitches the bruising sophomore back, Trevor Klein, following his blockers, and there he goes. Touchdown, Bulldogs, East Buchanan 21-3 with the point after. Later in the second, East Buchanan driving. Just unreal play here. Musser drops back to throw, looking deep to the back of the end zone. Adam Steven Ingus, oh my goodness. Touchdown, Bulldogs, one more time. Check this one out. Adam Steven Ingus, one more play, just tremendous. One foot down, East Buchanan rolls tonight, proves a seven and one winning 41-18. And some other scores, Lathrop taking on North Platte and they win this one 49-7. Maysville Wolverines hosting Putnam County tonight in this one. Wolverines trying to drive, rolling out to his right. This pass is caught along the sideline, keeps going. Wolverines get, finally get some yardage and pushed out of bounds on this a little bit later on in this one. Wolverines driving again. Spencer Pliley gets the handoff. He's got daylight. Pliley gets the 10 yard line before being chased down. And again, Caleb Justice under center. Again, draws back looking for Enzo, but it's picked off by Trace Renninger. He takes it down the sideline all the way to the 25 before the Wolverines catch him and push him out of bounds. Then fourth and goal at the one. Under center, it's a quarterback sneak, but he's short. The Wolverines recover the football. It's loose. Maysville goes on to win this one tonight by a final score of 51 to 18 in this one. Galton defeats Trenton 37 to 6 and South Harrison defeats, excuse me, and South Harrison with a shutout win against Princeton winning 48 to nothing. And Milan gets the win over Polo 17 to 8 in this one. And don't go anywhere because when we come back, we go to the land of eight-man football and can the Stanbury Bulldogs bounce back from last week's loss this week at East Atchison. And the Bishop of Law and Golden Eagles looking for their seventh win of the season against North and Christian tonight. Don't go anywhere for football tonight. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to football tonight. We've looked at 11-man football, and now it is time to check out some 8-man football. And we start right here in town. Bishop LeBlanc Golden Eagles hosting the Northland Christian Trailblazers in this one. First Blazers possession. Seth Martin drops back. Hits Dante Birch on the screen. Birch goes to work. Cuts outside. Makes a defender miss right there. And then lunges forward to get near the 5. Later in the drive, Martin throws. Landon Gardner picks it off. LeBlanc takes over on offense. Now, later in the quarter, Bishop LeBlanc going to work. Gardner in the gun. Scrambles to his left. Looking for Enzo. Lowers his shoulder. Gets big contact there by Birch, but he gets in for the touchdown. And Golden Eagles again on offense. And Reggie Love gets in for this one. And the Golden Eagles take this one 80 to 26. And joining us is the man of the hour, the head coach of Bishop of Long Golden Eagles with Planty the Potted Plant behind him. I don't know what that is. What, what kind of a plant is that? I don't know either. Great. Good start. <laughs> Chuck Davis joining us now, the head coach of Bishop of Long Golden Eagles. They are now 7-1 and one on the season. A big win for you guys tonight. Again, uh, just overall, what did you see? I saw a lot of speed from uh, Dante Birch. That kid is legitimately fast. Um, you know, not enough things can be said about Landon Gardner's performance, obviously. Uh, I don't know how many touchdowns he was responsible for, but it was a ton. Four interceptions, one was a pick six. That uh, The dude can play. Um, you know, senior night, couldn't ask for a better night for our, for our guys and our three seniors, so it was fun. Yeah, in the, f the first half, you, t you talk about Birch and how fast he is, and I mean, first quarter, they're driving each possession, it really feels like, and you get a, get a stop in the red zone. But how, just how difficult was it to stop him in, especially the first quarter, and what was your, kind of your message to the defense to get those red zone stops? We took Ben don't break a little too seriously tonight, I think, a little, a little too literally. Uh, you know, we told our guys that, unfortunately, he's a guy that makes so much happen in space that we had to reduce the space to make plays. Um, Obviously, down that close in the red zone, Landon had a couple interceptions that could have easily been touchdowns for them. But, you know, it, a little adversity is good for kids sometimes, I think. And, and the first quarter didn't really go the way we had hoped. And it was nice to see them have a few goal line stands and, and uh, come away with a big win. Bishop of Blonde head football coach Chuck Davis with the seven and one now on the season. Coach, thanks for coming on and good luck next week in week number nine and then it's the postseason. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'll miss Davis get back with you about what that plan is. She'll know. Yeah, that'd be great because I still don't know. I was staring at it the entire time. Thanks, Coach. <laughs> Thank you. Other score, St. Joe Christian on the road against Pattonsburg. Lions struggle a little bit. Pattonsburg gets a 56-32 victory. Two five and two teams facing off Stanbury Bulldogs on the road against East Ashton Wolves. First drive for the Bulldogs. Junior running back Gavin Cameron touchdown gets East Ashton the, er, the Bulldogs early lead. Following Bulldogs drive, Austin Swayback makes three men miss. Turn on the burners. He's going to go 65 yards to the house. See you later. Stanbury goes up 14 nothing at this point, but the Wolves coming back. Third and goal for East Ashton. Quarterback Josh Smith steps up. Finds fellow senior number 10, Carter Holsey for, Holsey for the score. Close one all night. East Atchison takes down Stanbury, 48-42. King City gets the win against Albany, 62-14. And then Worth County at home beats North Andrew, 70-50. When we come back here on football tonight, we take a look at the play of the week that was voted on by you, the fans. Stay tuned, you're watching football tonight. And Platte Valley trying to grab their sixth win of the season, traveling over to Stewartsville. Highlights coming up next on Football Tonight.
Welcome back, Platte Valley visiting Stewartsville Osborne. Just over two minutes left in the first half. Platte Valley up 52-0. Trying to get downfield across Bryant and Shotgun fires a pass to Diesel Griffin. Shotgun again. Bryant looking to the right this time to Braxton Gibson. One missed tackle, another missed tackle, and a third before he gets taken out of bounds. Wildcards marching. Bryant looking deep. Launches downfield, but it is picked off by Carter Luke. And then Jackson McCrary gets the handoff in this next play, and he has got room to run. He goes up the gut all the way down, but he is chased down by Gibson. And then Aiden Blackford in victory formation takes a knee, and that's the game in this one. Platte Valley wins 52-0. Now DeKalb falling to Mound City today, 56-0. And Southwest Livingston getting the close win, 32-28 against Nottoway Valley. Senior night at South Hold as they host Rockport, but first half, Rockport up 28-14. Micah making his pass complete to Colton Stevens. He's hyped about the first down, and why not? They were in the lead. Then it was ground and pound for the South Holt Knights freshman. Hayes Willer with the quarterback keeper. Next play, handoff to Gannon Phelan. That was how it went all night. Short runs and team tackling. South Holt comes back in the final moment, so this one like winning 34-30, a happy senior night for the six senior nights. And joining us to break down all the eight-man football action is our eight-man football analyst, Devin Albertson. Devin, thanks for coming on. A wild one for you up there in Fairfax, East Atchison, and Stanberry. Yeah, absolutely. It was a little more high scoring than we expected going into the game. The offense kind of showed out. Uh, but credit East Atchison, Josh Smith ran really well today at quarterback for EA. He had over 200 yards rushing on the day. Kalen Merriweather as well, one to attack, really was really effective today. And for Stanberry, their running game wasn't as good as usual, uh, but the swayback to swayback connection was very good. Tyler Swayback uh, probably had his best game. I, I've seen him play at receiver. He was fantastic tonight for Stanberry. Yeah, and Stanberry, they're obviously a really good team, but they've dropped two straight now. So what, what do you think, where do they go from here, and uh, what do you think they just need to focus on going into playoffs? Uh, get healthy. They were missing Austin Colvin tonight, Landon Martick, other couple of guys. So injury bug a little bit there for Stanberry. I think they'll be fine going forward. Uh, not getting easier next week. Worth County um, on the road, and then the playoffs there, possibly EA or Worth County again. They're probably looking to the 